Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 11. So, uh, apologies for the drinks riddling the background over there. I, uh, I, my, my, my area that I record in is a, is a disaster. Like, uh, basically, normally those are on the ground next to the refrigerator, off camera and everything, but... Right now, I'm I'm storing gifts for people who don't want their family members to see them and stuff like that, and I don't have a lot of room here, so the uh, uh, basically all I have is one little walkway leaving this room. Everything else is just boxes piled up, like waist high, maybe even a little higher. So yeah, I put them up there for now because I had to pack all that in. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that aside. Uh, not that it's that big of a deal anyway. I'm sure you guys don't care. We had a epic tug of war between All for One and, you know, Tomura Shigaraki wielding All for One and all that, trying to take the quirk from Midoriya. A little bit of All for One coming out once again, not fully decayed from the last time we saw Shigaraki decay the visage and be like, it's my will. He is still there. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, it seems like the 75% completion and everything has taken its toll. Supposedly, that's why he's not strong enough, or at least that's his excuse as to why he's not strong enough to, to take the one-for-all quirk. But it seemed like the wielders of one-for-all were able to fight back, and we had this conversation about how quirks have consciousnesses, which is a, uh, a pretty crazy thing to learn. Not just all-for-one and one-for-all. It is all quirks do. All for one had this when he steals quirks. If there's a little bit left of the person in there, that uh, that sometimes comes up and, and annoys him. So, uh, pretty pretty crazy stuff. But we also ha I also loved Bakugo's line of uh, "Don't win by yourself," which uh, was great because it it just reminded me of when Midoriya Midoriya and Bakugo went up against. Uh, All Might in the uh, in the little test, Bakugo kept trying to do everything himself, and Midoriya said a very similar line, saying, "Don't try to do everything by yourself. Like use me, you know." So, I I love it. I love Bakugo trying to come to terms with everything that he's done in the past and and make up for it in these moments and and stuff like that. So, great stuff. And then we have Toga, who is seems to be. Conflicted about some things that I talked last episode about how I'm not 100% sure what she's conflicted on, but I do I do vaguely understand what she's going for, but she's wondering if the heroes are going to kill her too, and I don't know if that's out of fear, out of curiosity about the line between heroes and villains and, you know, where that line is and, and who crosses it and who doesn't kind of thing uh and and stuff like that so with the uh she's kind of she's kind of going through some stuff with the loss of twice and and doesn't know how to feel i think so uh with her confronting uraka i wonder if they're gonna be able to have any kind of semblance of uh discussion at all during this encounter that might illuminate toga uh a little bit to to how the heroes that she uh i don't want to say looks up to but that she fancies, you know, are like how they how they are truly and everything. So very interesting stuff. I look forward to seeing more. So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to sneeze. Crap. We're going to start here in five, four, three, two, one. Now. <laughs> Sorry about that. I held that barely to get started. Best genus! He is alive. He just went into hiding. Ah, the genus. Never have I thought that when we first saw that character, I'd have a moment where I'm like, ah, he's back! Yes! That was like an All Might feeling right there, but with best genus. Oh, uh, the number four hero is back, who I think might be number three now, right? If I remember correctly in the rankings. 
Either that or he held his number four spot and someone jumped ahead. Not one hundo on that one. Na 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 Oh, I hope I was okay, man. They got him away and he didn't like die on screen or anything, so I think he'll be okay, but man, he's down a leg. Hopefully he removed it in time to stop the the quirk shit. Removing bullet. I hope Gran Torino is okay. He got punched real hard. That's someone I haven't talked about a lot, but but yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't stolen, yep. And then his shit fades and he's done. God, his arms are fucked. Oh, look at these boys. Shit. They're all so hurt. Oh, fuck. Todoroki! Oh. He's still trying to fight. Oh, shit! Um... Um, Nedro, right? Yeah. Oh, Ida. Oh, he has Gran Torino. Oh, she's messed up too. All right, jeez. Oh, he's like cut down the middle of his face. Or back here. She just. Yeah. Distractions. Good dodges. Yeah. Uh. Oh shit, she shot out a bunch. Uh, don't, don't let something like that distract you. Don't let it distract you. You're in, you're in a fight. Yes, don't get distracted. 
Oh shit! That's cool. She made stuff float around the room. Nice. Awesome. She gonna run? Oh, yes! See you! Oh, shit! Is that Gigantomachia? Uh, yep. She just poofs as soon as you take her eyes off her for a second. Hmm. There were tears. All right. Oh, Todoroki. Oh, shit. Hmm. Well, shit. Oh shit, Todoroki, let's go, baby. Flash fire fist. Calling them the by the quirks. This is typical all for one move. Oh, damn. Oh, jeez, look at that shot. Oh, that's a hard hit. Uh, of course he does. Oh, he's out of that mode now. Oh my god, one of his lungs. Oh, Endeavor! Yeah. Uh, cooling himself down. Oh, changing his hair color back. We're gonna get the reveal. Toya. There it is. The one who's supposed to be dead, right? I mean, we all knew it. We all knew it. It's finally revealed. <laughs> Shit. It makes sense. They're both here. 
The freaking dye remover. Hair dye remover. Oh shit. What? Oh shit, is this broadcast? Oh shit. The mom. Oh, fuck me. He's gonna ruin Endeavor's name on TV, isn't he? Uh, he's telling the whole backstory. Oh man, that guy. Oh, the kid. Uh, the fan. The Hey Look Boy, whatever it was. Oh, that's what he's he's for. Oh, this background music with like the laughing. Hmm. This is a cool, like, shot, like, spinning around him and the madness and everything represented in the camera work. Jeez. Oh, God. We can get Flash. Ooh. Okay. That's what he thought.
Yeah. Just keep trying. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, we know he hurts himself. I wonder if this is what he told Hawks, or if that's something else that we get a reveal later on. Ah, uh, proof. Oh, fool you me. Ah, uh, not so. Hey, look, boy needs to get out there! And hey, look! Ah, uh, he got a shot of that. Showing that on TV, too. Ah. Uh. Oh, uh, yes, this is the perfect time for Best Genist to come back now. Let's go. Come on, Genist. Oh, his father. Come on, they have to end the episode with the comeback of Genus, right? We had it in the beginning, and then he shows up in the end. Please. Oh shit. Now he now he wants to kill him. Oh, come on Endeavor. Oh, 
Shoto. Jeez. Come on, Genus. Is that the the cloth? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, starting today. Holy shit, look at him go. Oh. Such a good ending. Yes. That's so cool, dude. He can he can control fibers in clothing so they have cabling that is either specially made with stuff that he can manipulate with his quirk or because cables are just like a bunch of little fibers he's just able to control it regardless you know and they dropped a bunch of that with him from the sky and he wrapped up Gigantomachia he wrapped up Dobby oh so good it's so good Oh, and there it is. They keep adding little images to some of these outros. Depending on what's going on in the episode. Oh, look at that shot. That's crazy. Oh, man. This is just one crazy fight. Like... If you asked me last episode what I thought was going to happen this episode, I would have never told you I thought Best Genus was going to airdrop in. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, that is it for episode 11 of season 6. Oh, man. God, I'm, like, tearing up. That was so good. Like, it was just so good. But, uh, so, hmm. Where do I even begin? Uh, I mean, in the beginning, we, we had Best Gina show up. Like, I, I, I really wanted to believe that Hawks didn't actually kill Best Genus, you know? I was pretty confident in the moment that he didn't. And then I, I think that as the show went on, I was like, maybe he really did. Like, the way that uh, Dobby talked about it and stuff to Hawks. I I started doubting my own theory, but nope. He, However they did that, that fake body or whatever, because we didn't get to see a good look at it. All we saw was, like, the genus stuff in, like, a duffel bag kind of thing. So, like, the, the jean suit that he wears. Uh, I think that's all we really got to see. So, either they have some kind of person with a quirk that can make a fake body, they dressed up a fake body, or, or something, or or they had, like, I don't know. I don't know what they did, but they somehow convinced him, you know? And the, the best part is, is if we tie that into the video that he broadcasted, one of the best things you can do is, because obviously, like, at least in the moment, so you don't shake people's resolve. I guess he had, like, proof that he's his son kind of thing, so that's a little hard to uh, not believe. But in the moment, you can shake people's faith in that by Best Genus showing up. And if the if the TVs, if, like, the, the cameras can show Best Genus showing up, you discredit one thing he says, and people will start doubting everything else he said, regardless of whether it's true or not. So, um, but either way, I mean, this isn't at the moment. This is a this isn't a contest to see who's right and wrong in this situation. This is a fight to the death. So, um, but but yeah, we had I guess to go to the beginning um, a bit we. We had Ida and Neji Ray show up, which was really cool. I love having Ida show up to to try to help and, and everything, although it got overshined by everything else that happened. But they're there now, which is cool. 
uh, Todoroki doing some stuff too. He kind of showed up and didn't do didn't do a ton, but he got a flash fire fist off that was pretty cool, well animated and, and everything. That was that was awesome. Uh, Neji Ray doing some pretty strong blasts there. Like we know that she can control her output, and we've always I think a lot of what we've seen has been on like the lesser side, but I felt like. Uh, I felt like there was a little more force there in, in what we saw with her surge ability. Uh, and I like All for One being there, like, analyzing the situation, and he's always been that way, where he doesn't look at people as people. He looks at them as their quirks. So when, you know, Nejire and uh, Shoto show up, he's like, oh, half cold, half hot is here. You know, surge is here. Uh, I, I I like that because that's just consistent with his character and it makes it so much more evil, I feel like, is that he doesn't look at these people as, as people. So, very cool. But uh, but then we kind of jump to the... Uh, uh, the Toga stuff again, which was kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, we didn't get... We didn't get as many like answers for the audience as I as I kind of hoped, but I mean, you know, she maybe I just don't understand her, and it's hard to relate and understand the, the things she's going through. Sorry, I have like stuff on my eyes; it's really bugging me. Um, but I think she like she talked. I mean, she talked the same stuff that she said before, where. When she when she likes someone, she she gets obsessed with them. She wants to become them, and to become and because of her quirk to to be able to become them, she needs their blood. So basically, it boils down to when she when she loves someone, she she wants their blood real bad, and it's something that that she can't help, kind of thing. And she was trying to relate, you know. Um, her affection to someone with having their blood kind of thing as a a connection to Uraka who likes Midoriya and has this this keychain of, of that that was his. So I'm glad that the the keychain and stuff like that didn't end up being like a massive distraction for Uraka. Like it. It did distract her a little bit. She did lunge for it once, which might not have been the the smartest idea, but it wasn't it wasn't the reason that Toga like got away or hurt someone else or got the jump on her and stabbed her kind of thing. Because we already had that once where she was like, you know, who, you know, when you like someone, you want to become them, you know, and and back then, Uraraka focused a lot on like what would Midoriya do and. And stuff like that. Like, I don't think she wanted to become Midoriya, but I think she wanted to become like Midoriya with his with his drives and goals and being as capable as as he is in the moment and everything. So, you know, obviously hearing that in the moment, it, it got to her back then in the forest and, and then she got stabbed and had her blood taken. And this time she was a little more aware of that and everything. So that was that was very good. I like that. But Throughout that conversation, we had Toga, you know, tear up. I, and that was, I kind of want to go back. So give me a second, guys. Let me go and find where, uh, where Toga ended up tearing up. Because I, I want to remember what exactly was said. So, she says, I've been holding back this whole time, too. I was told to stop when I was little, but it wasn't any good. If I shut them away, they get bigger. So, like, that's the... She's talking about the the desire for, for blood and, and stuff like that, right? I think. And she was told to, to stop when she was younger, and... The more she stops, the the more she wants it. It's it's kind of like an addiction, and in a way, I I kind of feel bad for her because she might, you know, all these people all her life have been telling her to you know be normal and and all of this stuff. Maybe she maybe she wishes she could be, but there's just that 
that part of her, this instinct that this quirk gives her, which is kind of the the first time that I can think of off the top of my head that we've had a a quirk be a source of like like addiction or urging someone's personality to do certain things like most of the time quirks are just something that people people use but we've never really had like i don't think we've really had someone be like except for like i guess they tease the idea a little bit with uh shinso and his brainwashing and people saying like oh that's a good quirk for being a villain and that's kind of one that might tempt you to do villainous stuff. But Shinzo was such a good dude, it didn't actually tempt him. But here, you know, the the urge to have someone's blood is is kind of seemingly pushing Toga, even if it's a little bit against her will, to to do these these bad things. Now, I don't know how much of that is true and how much of it is just like her choice. But let's continue. Um, if you're going to live as you like and threaten people, then you need to accept the responsibility for your actions. And then she teared up and then said, yeah, like that's, I think that was a very good way of putting it from Uraka because that wasn't Uraka saying you need to die for what you've done, but that's kind of her, you know, it's kind of like what a parent would say to a child that is is doing stuff they're not supposed to is that they you know like if you're gonna do these bad things you're and she's aware that they're bad things too right like then on the other side you have to accept that there's going to be people there that need to stop you from doing those bad things because it goes against what our society is and like that we can't let that stand kind of thing and her reply with a little bit of tears was just interesting. I'm I'm really curious where this storyline goes. Um, obviously, the storyline isn't as interesting as everything else that's going on for me. But I think the the possibilities in the scope of this in the future is something that really interests me because I like I said I don't 100 percent understand what Toga is going through mentally and everything. But I think eventually I might understand, and then once I do understand, either rewatching this or looking back on a lot of these moments, I think that'll be really cool. So, so yeah. But moving on. Oh, oh also, uh, Toga revealed that she used, uh, she turned into Uraka again, and then used her quirk to, you know, kill people. So I wonder if that will come back at all with, uh. With Uraka hearing that, and it, after all this is over, will Uraka have time to think about that and like how how someone was it like? Because I feel like that might mess with you. Like obviously, it wasn't Uraka's fault at all. Like sure, it might have been Uraka's fault a little bit that she got the blood, but you know she's just a kid, and and everything. Like I don't think we can really blame her. But, and also never even knew that they could use the quirk either. That was something she, like, developed later on. Uh, but the fact that her quirk was used to kill people, regardless of whether it was her doing it or not, I could see that kind of uh, affecting someone, right? So, uh, we'll see that in the future, I'm sure, maybe. But uh, at least them talking about it, I'm sure. But... But yeah, and then we finally had the reveal, something that we've pretty much known for a long time. You know, we have these other fire wielders in the show, and then we have a bad guy fire wielder. It it makes sense that he is part of their family, especially, like, backed by the point in the forest where Dobby was, like, little Shoto, you know? Like, a little more familiarity with him versus anyone else there, uh... And, and stuff like that so so yeah he is Toya Todoroki uh which we learned what happened or what they thought happened to Toya which was he was caught in a fire probably uh he said that was where they like typically went to train right uh but Endeavor wasn't there the whole time so my thought is is maybe Toya 
as long as I didn't misread anything here, I apologize if I if I miss something or, or mix something up. I'll I'll get it corrected if I if I did. But my guess would be is that Toya came out here to train on his own without Endeavor and accidentally like started this fire that he got caught in. Um, now I guess we don't know that for sure. I think all they said in this was that he was caught in a fire that was like two thousand degrees Celsius or whatever. And he was burned to no remains left, and the only thing left was, like, a, a piece of his jawbone or, or whatever, so. Uh, but obviously, I don't know if Toya, like, faked his death and left that jawbone behind, or if it's just, like, in the fire that scorched his body, it left that, that bit behind or whatever. But I guess that, that explains why the Todoroki family thought he was dead, and he he wasn't um but and then he has this plan to just release his video revealing the whole backstory of endeavor and the thing is the crazy thing is is you know everything except for like the best genus stuff which isn't even really tied to endeavor right it's tied to hawks but uh everything he said if i'm recalling correctly is true at least Everything that we, I guess there are some things that we don't fully know of, of like how he raised him, but it seemed like Endeavor was like filling in those blanks, whereas, you know, it seems like everything he said was, was true. So it's not even like this villain coming on, like slandering the name of Endeavor. It's, it's really just telling the truth and opening the eyes of the public to what Endeavor has done you know, and obviously Endeavor is a bit different now, and he's changed since becoming the number one hero and trying to be a better person and everything, but that doesn't change the fact that he still did the things that he did. And, you know, we had a very real theme with Toga here being like, if you're going to do what you do, you need to accept the, you know, responsibility for your actions. In a way, this might be Endeavor having to take responsibility for his actions, too, so... It was, uh, I loved the, the cinematic view of it that we had of just, you know, him doing the hair dye or the hair dye remover or whatever, having like the white hair. Uh, now I thought I've heard that early in the show, they, they showed like, uh, uh, Shoto and then all the other siblings and one of them had like the straight red hair uh, that was the one that we thought was, like, Dobby, but then last season they showed us a picture of Toya, which was supposed to be, I think, that was supposed to be that son, but he had white hair instead. So I think, I don't know if the anime threw this in here to, like, help people, or if this was in the manga, right? Because that's the thing, is they didn't know what color the hair was supposed to be, uh, at the time, because manga is black and white, right? So they made that mistake in the anime. So I wonder if the the idea of him, like, his hair changing from red to white was, like, the anime fixing its continuity of showing the kid very young with red hair and then a little older at, like, right before his death, at, like, with white hair, right? So uh, it's interesting um i'm curious to know whether that's in the manga or it, if it was like an, an anime like change but i don't know uh i mean I, I guess i'd have to read the manga up till this point and try to like find that but not get spoilers on things that are coming up so i mean let's be real i'm probably not going to read the manga <laughs> at least not right now maybe like when my hero anime is done and finished i i may read the the manga from start to finish just to just to see what it's like in in manga format because i absolutely love the show and everything and and then maybe i'd find out but that's probably a very far very far away so but uh but yeah regardless it's uh it's interesting that his hair changed from from red to white yet he still had the the fire quirk and and it's also really interesting uh, endeavor talking about how toya's fire power was more than him so even though he you know was hoping to get a shoto half cold half hot in order to regulate the heat uh 
he, you know, this this boy had more firepower than him, so he still had that hope, like, oh, if I if I train you well from this young age, you could become a hero and, and potentially, you know, his whole old motivation of surpass all might for me kind of thing. So uh so it wasn't just Shoto being this this golden child, right? But uh I still wonder where it went wrong, like Obviously, Endeavor wasn't the nicest guy. Probably not the nicest guy while training, even though they didn't show us anything like anything super cruel. Actually, the what what was shown between Endeavor and Toya actually didn't seem too bad. Like Toya didn't seem like he was angry and regretting like having to train with him at least at that young age when his hair started to turn. You know, so like. I wonder I wonder where it went wrong between there and the fire. Maybe it was like uh Shoto being born. Um because when Shoto was in the house getting trained by Endeavor, Toya was down there playing with the other kids. We had that one shot of him. So he definitely was around when Shoto was born. So maybe as soon as Shoto was born, he gave up training all the other kids and focused solely on Shoto. Right, and there was also that little hint of like the using the fire and the little scorch on his skin, because we know that using his fire like burns him and everything. So it might have just been that oh, you know, Shoto's the more perfect one. Gave all his attention to Shoto, ignored the rest of the kids, and that's what led Toya off the deep end, kind of thing, right? So and obviously just the things he did to his wife and and everything. Not he wasn't. A good dude back then so but uh but yeah anyway oh man best genius coming in i already talked about that a little bit but him him coming in at the end like that was awesome i was i was really scared because i glanced over and i saw how close the episode was to ending i was really scared we weren't gonna get it and we we're gonna get it at like the start of the next episode but oh it's just so perfect being able to fit that in as a as a bookend here of of best genus coming in oh it's so cool and it's also great that you know for best genus he he had that really big injury the last time he fought all for one trying to save all the people around him he you know ended up getting hurt and then getting blasted which put him out of commission for a while and now he's back uh, you know up against a bunch of villains but also the successor to all for one it's kind of his his second chance to stop this guy. So I, I love it. Like I said, I, n I never would have expected him to, to come in like this uh, before this episode. It, it would have never even crossed my mind. So, And I like how they tied it into, you know, I, I briefly talked about the effects that it could have, but I didn't really talk about, like, how much I like the fact that they, you know... Just how like he's he's coming in in this moment. It's just really good timing, as uh Dobby is or Toya is releasing this video, uh, saying like, oh yeah, Hawks killed the guy, and he also killed a hero in order to earn our trust. You know, he killed Best Genius, and now Best Genius is dropping from the sky. It's just it's so perfect way to counter that video, and you know we have the hey look boy and and everything, who loves Endeavor, and hearing all this stuff, and it's just, like, looking for that one, that one thing to make him just not believe any of this, and I hope he sees, like, Best Genius, and he's like, oh, he lied about this, he could be lying about that stuff, too, so, um, I mean, even though he's not, but, you know, I also like that the Halo boy still wasn't exactly losing faith, like, there was that he, like, thought back to the moment with Endeavor raising his hand, and he's like, don't think you'll, like, make us lose faith in heroes that easily, or, or whatever he said. He said something about that, or uh, or whatever, but, but yeah, very cool. Uh, I just, this episode didn't have a lot to it, to be completely honest. I mean, it did. It had a lot of reveals, but it was a lot of talking, right? It wasn't like we had you know, crazy fighting. We had, like, that one flash fire fist from Todoroki and, and Neji Ray doing a little bit, and then a little bit of action from Uraka, which 
going back to that, Uraraka's thing where she floated stuff in the room as she was, like, jumping around and everything was cool, and then she attached, like, a bunch of her little cables to it and was able to fling them around. That was a really, that was a really cool maneuver, so I, I like that. I, I like seeing, like, it's so creative because you're like, oh, this girl can touch things and make them float. Like, how, how is she gonna, like, improve her power? And it's not necessarily improving her power, but improving how she uses her power and coming up with these ideas is, is really neat, so, um, but, but yeah, uh, other than that, you know, we had the Toya reveal, and we had his long rant, and the video being played and everything, which I'm perfectly okay with. I'm not saying this is, like, a bad thing. It's just amazing how into the episode I was when a lot of it was just, you know, talking like that, so, but, uh, but yeah, I love it, guys. I can't wait to see more. I can't wait to see Best Genus recovered, back in action, and everything, you know, uh, it's, it's gonna be great. I still uh, think that they're going to end up like Makia and Shigaraki and them are going to get away and our heroes are going to have to, you know, we're going to have Midoriya who's hurt and has to deal with the fact that he used his arms a bunch of times. Like they might not even be good anymore. Who knows? Um, Bakugo being as hurt as he is. Uh, recovering from that and then just the mental and physical damage that Endeavor and Shoto and and all of the Todoroki family took from this it's going to be a lot of recovering in a lot of different ways so um and then same with the villain side recovering too because you know it's not like not like only one side took damage here but <clears throat> but yeah uh and one one more thing is like the the bookend to this uh that that moment where endeavor was breaking and and not able to even lift a finger and shoto was there like yelling him like he's coming dad we got to we got to take this guy and crying while he says it oh that was such a powerful like sad but also powerful moment it was great absolutely loved it so um and then obviously Genus came in to, to save the day, so that was really awesome. But uh hopefully that'll snap Endeavor out of his out of his funk seeing Genus show up kind of thing. But uh but who knows? I just wanna watch more. But that's gonna be it for me, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Check out my Patreon if you wanna see more from me. Uh nothing new for this show in terms of my Patreon, but there is all kinds of Patreon exclusive content, other shows that aren't on YouTube yet. Uh, check that out and uh, and also early access for some of the other shows that I do on my channel so and it's a way to support the channel if you wanted to so thank you guys so much and I will uh, see you in my future reactions link to all that description below bye guys